like we just had challenges because we're like in the five percent of Charles <laughs> County that doesn't have no internet, internet access. <laughs> Um, we're here for another Let's Talk. Uh, for this session, we're talking about homeschooling and schooling at home. Um, a lot of us have started back the um, recently with um, either schooling with the county or homeschooling. So we're just here to kind of talk about how that's going and how we got started and where we've been. Um, so why don't we start off? Um, because I feel like to get here, we really have to talk about where we've come from. Spring. The spring. <laughs> oh, what was the spring? <laughs> yes. So talk to me about, um, I guess, how you guys felt about the, the spring and COVID hitting and how that impacted home life for you guys. Um, it was really hard. It was very difficult uh, because it was so sudden and so quick. The kids really didn't feel prepared right. to begin that. Um, Neither did we. <laughs> I, I didn't feel prepared for that. Uh, so all of us trying to learn something new together was very hard. Right. And not a lot of patience mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we quickly uh, quickly realized just how grateful like we were for teachers. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it didn't take like more than a week of the kids being at home doing school uh, before we realized like, oh my gosh. We love our teachers. So <laughs> sorry to all y'all teachers out there who didn't feel as appreciated as you should have been by the yes. Sylvain family. Yes. Uh, we love you and we miss you dearly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, back in the spring, I remember there was this couple week long, I think it was like two weeks mm -hmm. after um, the stay at home order hit that the schools were trying their best to put out some curriculum. Yep. And um, I remember we were trying to find our footing there, trying to get something for the kids to do, worksheets, reading books, and then suddenly the school was like, oh, we got something, and then we had we had challenges personally at our house, despite how uh, awesome they were and the yeah. effort that they put out, like we just had challenges because we were like in the 5% of Charles <laughs> County that doesn't have no internet. internet access. So for us, um, thank God we were able to come to, you know, places and download some stuff and we were able to do that but I mean it was it was tough it was yeah. a hard hard season we learned a lot in a short amount of time it was really hard but I will say um, we did learn a lot from that and there were good things that came out of that yeah we were able to see where our children had gaps mm -hmm. where we've just been too busy with working we're both working right. full-time yeah. working parents we were just too busy to see that they needed extra in math or language. Um, so it has helped for this year mm -hmm. going into now, um, looking back at the spring, right? Yeah. It, it, there were benefits, right? There really were. Yeah, I definitely agree on the benefits. Um, just being able to see for each child, you know, yes. where those gaps are and, you know, what really wasn't there um, because like you, my husband and I are both working parents yep. full time. You know, my husband works probably one and a half, two jobs. Like he's very busy. So um, school was really, I send them away yep. and you go do what you're supposed to do with the people. You know, we pay the taxes and we like that. that that's what they're for. And it's like, mm, no, but that's also my responsibility. And yep. it was kind of just easier to think they're getting taken care of there because we do have quality teachers and we do have yeah. people, you know, that, that that's their gifting. So let me just send them there to do that. And when we're at home, we can think about school after we think about the sports practice and after we think about dinner and after we're thinking about cleaning and after we're thinking about, you know, all of the other yeah. things, then it's like, oh, well, you know, we're at the dinner table by then and it's late, and it's like, oh, well, we don't even have time to do anything yeah. about this gap that I'm just now finding out about. Yeah. So it really was, you know, a time to slow down because it's in your face and you're seeing all the time that, like, even for me, like, I had a kindergartner last year and just sight words in general, like, she's still struggling with some of the kindergarten words now, and yeah. she's in first grade. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's where I can really wrap my hands around that 
and own it yeah. because I didn't own it before. I really was more hands off than I should have been. Now we're doing sight words in the car because we do have a 40 minute drive. We're doing sight words in the car. We've got them taped to the walls and we're like hitting them. And like a Pinterest yeah. is my friend. Yeah. Yeah. And we are like really hopping into it because like now it's not, there's not that excuse that it's someone else's job. And there's also not that excuse that we have 30,000 other things going on. Like life really has slowed down. So I agree like the benefits are there. It doesn't make it easy. No, I mean, yeah, it was a huge, <laughs> huge rude awakening um, those first few weeks, especially when, because like you were saying, for us, educating the kids was always a dimension that we had outsourced in our life. Yes. And we already were living a life that was full, yes. right? That had Very. a ton to do. And we felt like we were at capacity pretty mm -hmm. much with what we were able to do. So despite romantic notions that I know I had reading certain things about the value of classical education right. and homeschooling and man, would it be so cool if, you know, I could live a life where I could be part of educating the kids, but then I would look at it practically and be like, there's no way. It's overwhelming. I don't have time where, for that. How am I yeah. going to fit this in? And I'd see homeschool families and people who were doing it and I'd just be like, you know, you are a special kind of person. Yeah. I just assumed <laughs> that if they were yes. doing it, that there was no way that we could do it. And Casey and I, from the time that we were about to have Noah, which yeah. is, you know, 13 years ago now, uh, we, we kind of decided then, like, we're never going to be a homeschool family. Yeah. We just never felt personally equipped yeah. or comfortable that that our kids had to, we, we can be trusted with their life, but we wouldn't feel like <laughs> their education was something that we should be trusted with. I wasn't the best student. I wasn't, you know, I'm not super confident in those things. But despite the romantic notions I had when we were thrown into it, I freaked out a little bit. And there was this recoiling that happened for a few weeks. And now coming out of it, starting to see some of the benefits mm -hmm. um, that you were just touching on. I actually, I see the beauty all over again. Like you were saying, driving to work and you're doing sight words in the car, which mm -hmm. I don't know how you do that and drive at the same time. <laughs> we need to have a discussion There's about multiple that. children, and they, yeah, they pull help. The, wheel. the big ones help the little ones. It's a team effort. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. But that's kind of beautiful. And that was something that we were outsourcing before. Right. And now, suddenly, we're, we're reining it in, and we're putting our hands on the wheel of our education, the kids' education. And there's something kind of neat and beautiful that we're weaving together at the same time. And really, it's, it's that whole part of relationship. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm loving that. Absolutely. Um, I feel like just, and I don't think we touched on this yet, but the three of us are homeschooling. So both of our households yeah. are homeschooling. So we're not, um, go, we're not doing school at home through the county, right. but there are a lot of similarities in that right now. And I think that's really beautiful yeah. because like you guys, we were never not even on a radar like if there was a negative <laughs> likelihood oh, we yeah. would have been down there oh, yeah. um with the potential to homeschool mm -hmm. um like you it felt overwhelming and and yeah. just like there was just, that was not on the radar yeah. um but with this situation happening and and that benefit of revealing those things um you know it definitely wasn't an easy decision mm -hmm. but even now seeing um you know when Ella's doing her sight words and she gets excited. She's like, mom, mom, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Like I didn't get to see that when she was going to school, right. Right. you know, and you know, and that joy. And again, like that, that multi-layering beauty doesn't mean it's easy every day. Yeah. We'll get to that later. <laughs> but, um, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking of this morning's homeschooling session where the word yeah. butthole was the answer for every question. I hope that's PC. We can bleep it out. But Every like, question. oh my word, oh my word, <laughs> teenagers, middle school yeah. teachers, we love you. I miss you yeah. so much. I do. Yeah, it's definitely not easy every day. But to see like to see that joy for her in that moment um, and even my bigger ones. So we've got a sixth grader and a fifth grader as well as a first grader. And, you know, they're around. They're close while we're doing the work. And she's, you know, hitting the, the letters and, and the words and you know, she's just getting really excited and we're high-fiving and woo, yeah, like giving her all this praise. And then I've got 11, almost 12-year-old, like 5'9", <laughs> like muscular, like yeah. like preteen coming over. Mom, mom, I did all of all of my math. I got it done. <laughs> like you could see that he was like excited to share with me that he had gotten that done. 
and he wanted that praise too. Where I think in my mind, this is again one of those benefits that he is big and he is growing and it is middle school and there is hormones and you know all that stuff. Like I really thought he was out of the positive, re like that wasn't something that I needed to do for him, right, you know, to help him. I, that wasn't yeah. what I thought. But, you know, seeing that excitement and that, and then Evans, mom, when am I going to get a turn to do work with you? <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, it really, it really made me take a step back and say, okay, yeah. this, is good. this is good. This is yeah. right. It's hard, it is hard, but it is right. Like, that is what we should be doing. Um, so how did you guys decide to homeschool? What did that mm -hmm. process look like for y'all? It was very hard. I feel like everything about this is hard. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, but I remember the moment where um, God, it was totally God, <laughs> it's a God had thing. to really soften my heart and shift my perspective of education, of right. myself, of my qualification um, to be their educator. And I was actually at work here in a meeting, and somebody was talking about, I think you were talking about somebody else's decision to homeschool because of what was decided. and, and it was summertime, so I was like, nope, we're not thinking about school, <laughs> denial, nope, nope. So I, it hit me in that meeting, oh my gosh, I have to make a decision. I have to make this decision for my three children, all in different grades. I have no idea what their life's going to look like. I have no idea what career they're going to choose. I don't know what needs to be focused on because of that. Right. Like, all of these things hit me. Overwhelming. And I just started crying in that meeting. And they're talking about something completely <laughs> different over here. And I was like looking up like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And they just came because I'm not a crier in meetings. And, um, very private crier. Very, very private, private crier. crier. Yes. Yep. yes. I believe you even said, y'all, stop. I did. Like, you can't, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> you can't, stop. And they're like, they're like starting to be like, stop. Yeah. Yes. yes, they didn't stop. So <laughs> yeah, I, Dave and I like went off for a walk and really um, just talked and both like prayed and um, somebody else came to us and prayed for us. Uh, and really since that moment, there has been just this peace and softening in the decision to homeschool mm -hmm. our kids. Yeah. Not because of any decision a county made, not because of any teacher. Right. Um, it just needed to be this way for us for this time. Right now. Yeah. And we prayed and prayed. And I mean, I from that moment, I have spent I don't know how many hours researching, watching YouTube videos, mm -hmm. watching curriculum samples from everything I would have thought I could use, wouldn't use, um, just everything I have just completely dove into this world mm -hmm. of schooling mm -hmm. and education um, that I would never have if this all hadn't happened. Yeah. Like, uh, right, like you said, I homeschooling was negative yeah. on our my radar. Um, but now I really don't know what I don't need to know what next year is going to look like. But my heart is like. I could continue on doing yes. this, even though today was rough, but <laughs> I could continue doing it. So tell me about your first three weeks, because this is week three, right? Yes. Yep. So you started a little earlier than yep. the regular school year, but um, so what does that look like so far for you? Well, I can't speak to week one because... I oh, actually right. was gone the first <laughs> uh, terrible time. He abandoned don't want to talk about ship, it. everyone. He abandoned ship. Oh. We shouldn't have mentioned it. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did miss the first week. But what's been cool that I've really loved is that we're, we're kind of doing this as a partnership yeah. um, because I love to teach. I love that aspect of it. And I get really invested and maybe a little bit too invested, I'm starting to learn, <laughs> because I really want them to get it. And if they're not getting it, I'm just like, get it you know but um Casey has the strength of being really organized and administrative and I'm just not that naturally it takes me a lot more effort where she just sees it and just thinks that way so um us splitting a lot of those duties where I'll teach um two week you know two days of the week she'll teach the other two days and then we'll come together on our day off and teach together that has been really really neat because I've been thinking about it and this is going to sound terrible, but I'm just being honest. Like, I can't think of any time since the kids were babies that we've had this much time with them. 
and I get I just got emotional. <laughs> I didn't expect that, <laughs> but it's that has meant a ton, and and we're making it work. I mean, we're 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 working full time, but then still having these really dedicated, you know, pointed yeah. pointed times of of learning at like hours on end, and I just never thought I could do it. Never thought I'd have the capacity. Never thought we could pull it off. But now I'm here, and yeah, it's a lot, and I'm feel really really tired at the end of the day. But I'm absolutely loving the fact that I'm seeing them develop incrementally and I'm not going to, I feel like this month I'm not surprised by their growth like I was last year where suddenly they were just older in my sight Mm -hmm. and they were just bigger. It's like, when did you grow up? Mm -hmm. And I realized that a lot of that growing up is happening in the context of the outsourcing of the schooling that we've been doing. Or, and let me just be clear about the outsourcing thing. Uh, I feel like school coming into the home is kind of neat, whether you're the one driving that, right. you know, as people who are watching, uh, yeah. or, or if the educators that are helping put all that together and are sitting with your, your student um, in front of a screen at home, just the fact that the education is in your home, yeah. I think is pretty amazing and it's and kind of a gift from God if mm. I might go that far I might be pushing it but I agree I think it could be a gift because there's some sort of responsibility that comes with that where now even if you're not the one teaching you come home and you're just so much more involved than you ever were before that's how we felt last yeah. spring and we felt like really pushed into it because we had no choice who did <laughs> but it was it, it became a good thing like oh wow I'm, I'm watching their progress in a way that I I did before, but it felt more quarterly, you know, yeah. didn't feel as much. The homework is, is like all the work is homework now. So we, whereas we used to look at homework, now we're really like looking at all the work, the yeah. full scope of what Embracing they're learning. It. And now it's like so much more part of our conversations all the time. So I feel like there's something cool that God's doing in bringing school home. And that might be kind of a nice place to kind of segue out because I feel like the Holy Spirit wants to take that and make it something special. Mm-hmm. One thing, and I don't want to steal your thunder because I want you to answer this too because you've been, you really instituted this. So credit to Casey, her pastor husband didn't think of this first, but she <laughs> did, which would be to put, start our day, yeah. start school with devotion and some heart work yeah. through scripture. Um, and that has been amazing, like mm-hmm. seeing that. I missed today's, so I don't know how today went, but it's been really good, um, the times that I've been teaching and that we've been doing it together, and that's probably, like, it's the best way to start the day with them. We always used to pray and stuff before, but now, like, diving in a little bit more mm-hmm. and making that part of education, I feel like it's been amazing. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree. Um, and it's not something that's limited to those of us who chose to homeschool. Yeah. Like, you have the time. Before the Zoom starts, yeah, to pull out ten or fifteen you minutes, have. yeah, right. It doesn't have to be long. Like yeah. today, I started a different book, and this one is longer, but the other one was a page and a half, and they were like half pages, yeah. really. Um, so it doesn't have to be long, but just getting that in yeah. there, into mm-hmm. their mind, starting their day rooted mm-hmm. in the Word, and yeah. and whether you open your Bible or not, like. Yeah, you um, studied it a little bit. Uh, I just really felt like that was important. It was one of my really top priorities in homeschooling and mm-hmm. deciding that was I get to choose what the kids what learn. they're yeah. learning and yeah. how they're learning it. And devotion and Bible have to be in there for us. Yeah, not everybody has mm-hmm. to do that, mm-hmm. but for us, that just yeah. was important to me. Yeah, and it's been going great. Yes, so we've been really happy with. Absolutely. It's been real cool. So thanks, God. <laughs> Has anybody said thanks, Corona, yet? No. Mm, no, no, we shouldn't no, do that. No, we, do that. we will not no. thank the Rona. God didn't bring Corona. <laughs> uh, so the last thing that I really want to touch on um, is the social aspect. So whether you're homeschooling or schooling at home, um, or even if they're going to a private school that is in person, everyone's social distancing, and just the social aspect that school used to give the children is not there. Yeah. Um, and I think that is one of those things that's also important for them in their development. Um, so I guess just talk to me a little bit about what that looks like for you guys. Um, it's hard. It's definitely very difficult. But one thing that I have um, been reading about a lot and realizing is um, they can socialize with their siblings. Like 
that's okay. Yeah. And their relationship has definitely changed and gotten stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, But also practically looking into rec sports Mm -hmm. when that starts up again. Yeah. Um, Meeting with other families outside playing um, safely. Yeah. Just getting them out, whether I feel like going out or not, (laughs) getting out, um, being intentional about them talking with other people. Um, Also, it's made us aware of how they are socially. Mm -hmm. So to help them conversate better, if that's even a word, but Mm -hmm. like to talk to people in different ways and and how to make friends different yeah. than being mm-hmm. in outside a of Roblox, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and even with um, kind of the schooling at home aspect, where you are on a screen with other people, yeah. like what does that look like as far as your social interactions? And you can even if you're in the same room with them while they're with their teacher and their classmates, and you're over here doing work because that doesn't stop for any of us. And you know, hopefully, a lot of the parents that are doing the schooling at home are able to telework, so they are able to be close. But hearing what those interactions look like, um, or sound like, I guess, um, whether it's, you know, there or whether it's a FaceTime, you know, with their friends. But, you know, like you said, being able to help them, you know, develop those social skills are part of growing them up. And I think that, again, it's just another blessing that we're able to see just their their total development, whether it's their spiritual development, you know, adding those devos in in the morning, their social development, um, you know, hearing what those interactions look like with their friends, you know, their education, like all of those things like this. No one is thanking the Rona. No. But <laughs> God will yeah. make beauty from these ashes. Right. And the beautiful things are just coming out of it. And I'm just so thankful yeah. that I have people around me that are focusing on the positive things yeah. because if there are enough negative things <laughs> that if we focus on them yeah. that it can really kind of bring you down i know for the school system you know the first day or two locally yeah. like the whole thing crashed yeah. and you know like That's if so we bad. have people that are focusing on that negative aspect yeah. it can make it more difficult but really surrounding yourself with people that are positive and that are celebrating what god is doing through this situation that we're in like is really important so um i think that is where we will wrap up for this time i want to thank you guys for chatting with me and Mm -hmm. and just having time to love on each other and celebrate what we're doing awesome yes god is good thank you all for watching and we'll see you all next time